This film outlines Cambridge Progression Maths, Unit 05760, Fractions and Decimals. Many learners have problems with fractions, and it could be helpful to consider the meaning of a fraction. The following five slides explain how fractions can be understood. As part of a whole, as a comparison, as a point on a number line, as the result of a division, comparing sizes. Comparing measurements. Most teaching is based around example A. The fraction is part of a whole. There are six learning outcomes discussed in this film. Essentially, it assesses learners' ability to perform addition and subtraction involving fractions and to recognize and generate equivalent fractions. Additionally, Learners are assessed on their ability to perform calculations without the aid of a calculator, where all of the numbers involved have decimals, rounding the answers if required. Learners will also be assessed on their ability to order fractions and decimals. Throughout this unit, learners are required to use their knowledge and recognition of factors. Factors were encountered in an earlier unit, 05756. For learning outcome number one, learners must be able to evaluate one quantity as a fraction of another. Firstly, learners must be able to express one number as a fraction of another, simplifying where possible, so recognition of common factors will clearly be required. An example is shown on the slide. Next, learners must be able to convert quantities with different measurements to the same unit. For success here, Learners will have to be familiar with the metric system, knowing that, for example, 100 centimeters is 1 meter, and 1,000 milliliters is 1 liter, 1,000 grams is 1 kilogram. Sadly, many learners struggle with the equivalences between units. Typical questions assessing this knowledge are shown here. Note that the questions may assess non-metric conversions, as will be seen in the following slide. Finally, learners will be required to combine these two pieces of knowledge in order to demonstrate that they can convert quantities to allow one quantity to be expressed as a fraction of another. This is shown in the next slide. For learning outcome number two, learners must be able to order fractions with different denominators. To meet this outcome, learners are required to use their knowledge of factors and multiples. A typical question is shown here. Unless the fractions being compared are straightforward ones, like a half or a quarter, they will need to have a common denominator. In other words, they will be changed into equivalent fractions so that the size of their numerators indicates their relative sizes. Here, 4 and 16 are factors of 32, or alternatively, 32 is a multiple of 4 and 16, making the common denominator 32. The next two slides show the conversions of 1 quarter and 3 sixteenths into fractions with a common denominator of 32. This simplifies comparison between the sizes of the three fractions by looking at the numerators as shown here. For learning outcome number 3, Learners must be able to add and subtract fractions with different denominators. This builds on the knowledge used in the previous outcome, changing fractions into equivalent fractions in order to add or subtract them. Clearly one cannot add or subtract, for example, three-fifths and one-quarter, without changing both fractions into fractions with the same denominators. All too often, learners make the mistake of adding or subtracting the numerators and adding or subtracting the denominators as shown here. 
An addition and a subtraction calculation are shown in the next two slides. For learning outcome number four, learners must be able to order decimal numbers with up to three decimal places. The knowledge for this outcome is covered in Unit 05756, and learners can be reminded of the place value table, such as shown here, to help answer this question. The numbers increase moving from right to left. Clearly, 40.1 is the largest and 4.01 is the next largest. Considering the remaining two numbers, 0 0.401 and 0 0.041, 0 0.401 is larger than 0 0.041. 4 tenths is larger than 4 hundredths. The order thus is 40.1, 4.01, 0.401, 0 0.041. A common mistake is ignoring the decimal point and assuming the more digits a number has, the larger it is. This is illustrated here. Thus, putting the following numbers in size order, 0 0.2, 0 0.04, 0 0.009, 0 0.076, starting with the smallest. Learners often write the list as given, 2 is smaller than 4, which is smaller than 9, which in turn is smaller than 76. For learning outcome number 5, Learners must be able to perform calculations with decimals using the four arithmetic operations. It is important to note the calculation methods assessed in this outcome. These are addition or subtraction of numbers with up to three decimal places. Multiplication of numbers with up to two decimal places by numbers with no more than one decimal place and division of numbers with no more than one decimal place by numbers with no more than one decimal place. The best way to explain these criteria is by example. This slide illustrates the first, adding and subtracting numbers with up to three decimal places. Write the numbers in columns, keeping the decimal points in line. When multiplying decimals, there is a straightforward process to follow. Firstly, do the multiplication ignoring all decimal points. The digits in the answer will be the same as the digits in the final answer. Then count the number of decimal places in the two numbers to be multiplied. Next, put the decimal point in the answer obtained in the first step so that the final answer has the same number of decimal places found in the second step. Finally, divide the numbers with no more than one decimal place by numbers with no more than one decimal place. Here, the simplest approach is to multiply by 10, the number you are dividing by, which makes this number into a whole number. And then multiply the number you are dividing into by 10 as well, this means that the answer will be unchanged. For example, 10 divided by 2 equals 5, and 100 divided by 20 equals 5. For learning outcome number 6, learners must be able to round decimal numbers. More specifically, rounding decimal numbers to an appropriate or given degree of accuracy. Learners must be familiar with the place value system, as indicated by the column headings shown here. When rounding whole numbers, there is a procedure to be followed. Firstly, identify the digit in the column, identified by the question. Then, look at the next digit to the right. If it is less than 5, then leave the target digit as it is. If it is 5 or more, add 1 to the target digit. And finally, replace the remaining digits with zeros. The three examples here illustrate this process. The same procedure should be followed when rounding to a given number of decimal places. But the unwanted decimal digits can just be removed, there is no need to replace them with zeros, as shown here. <laughs>